uh, FLX28 Vexilar for better half of like, I'm gonna say six years. And I've gone back and forth from the Gens Pack to the Pro Pack to the Gens Pack to the Pro Pack. And I kind of gravitate always towards the Pro Pack because it fits in the five gallon bucket. I love the modification potential with the Gens box, um, but Again, Pro Pack because it fits in a bucket, uh, and I'll demonstrate that um, in a little bit. But I just wanted to go over some of the mods that I've done over the years, always trying to refine and figure out how to make it better. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to get the system to just all encompassing. It almost feels like at times I have too much on it. When I'm running and gunning, I don't want to go back and grab this and that. It's just Everything is there, so let's get into it. Uh, first things first, nothing too uh, different from the, the head unit itself, but when you zoom in towards the bottom, you'll notice I made, or I found, so to speak, a cup. And ironically, it fits the deucer. So what I ended up doing is I removed the deucer cup in the back to free up some room, but what I did up front was I created a deucer cup in this little tray. And it's got little risers, so if the cup goes in here, there's only three points of contact versus a full point of contact where the deucer always will freeze when the nights are cold. And this piece will at least allow the water to drain um, and not freeze as bad. I'm sure it'll still freeze, but it won't freeze as bad. Uh, and what is this little cup? It's a peanut container cap. <laughs> And what it does is it fits pretty nicely um, inside here. Obviously, it's kind of stuck, um, but like that. It's got probably right now it's raised because of that little those little three bumpers that I added in, um, and that's it. And then this tray I kind of use for junk uh, as I'm, you know, if I need anything. But I always carry some type of a little bit of foam. Uh, so I can stick my jigs in real quick and then I, once I get home I'll, I'll organize them back into my container afterwards. I probably should remove the transducer bolt. I, I rarely use it but I do carry it. have a bobber in here just in case if I do want a bobber uh, fish but pretty rare. Before we move on to the right side, um, there's this hole to add, you know, those Vexilar accessories, but I find them to be bulky and cumbersome, so I try to avoid that. But I've been trying to figure out what to use those for, but I don't know, what do you guys use them for? Comment below if you have any other ideas that doesn't use the Vexilar type items. So in the past, I would have thrown perhaps like a toothpick in there or my forceps in there um, but that's the past all right moving on to the right side uh, here you'll see my GoPro it, I put a mount where uh, you could put like a DD100 or what other little accessories the battery meter perhaps would also possibly go right here but that's where I put the GoPro mount, and that allows me to um, quickly add and remove the GoPro. Like follows. It is actually holds pretty strong. I don't know how well it's going to do in the cold, but that's something uh, we'll find out in, in, in the future. And some of the accessories on the GoPro itself. Um, I'll show you what I have actually just in case you guys are interested in the setup So this is the standard old um, GoPro mount So I'll show you if I can get that out Always an awkward awkward angle. So here's the mount itself um, And that attaches to essentially a camera style so if I do, and if I don't have the GoPro, I can remove the GoPro 
and then I got a quarter quarter 20 nut right on top and I can attach my phone holder and use my phone instead so it gives me a little bit of versatility and I'm not just stuck using just the GoPro okay um, so the GoPro has a battery pack uh, I'll show you this little device that I found but it does come with the battery pack already on it and it's just another redundancy because once you're out of battery then you got no more footage all right moving on to the back uh, let's see let's move on to the back side actually before we do that let's just get a quick glow cup uh, pick video of the glow, glow cup that I made now, essentially it's a wasp spray cap um, pretty simple and I have it plumbed in so that I can plug it in to the actual GoPro power so plug that in turn that on and I got glow power charge up all my jigs so that's pretty cool and in case anyone is wondering where this big old essentially there's a quarter 20 at the bottom of this but and then there's a quarter 20 on top this is from Markham they sell I think it's called like a gooseneck or something and that's what I used just and I've always wanted the glow cup to be higher up versus at the base of the Vexilar which I always found to be pretty cumbersome because you're always having to bend. But if you have a higher, you can be standing and glow, charge your glow jigs real quick and less strain on your back and stuff. All right, the backside. This is where all the action's happening. Um, I have this is a medium-sized clam uh, jig case that they just came out with. This slim jig case is what I'm gonna call it uh, very very small compact holds a ton of jigs um, and it's pressure fit so if you listen other than the dingle drop I believe that's the only thing that's moving but it holds jigs incredibly well and the foam is super thick so the hooks get buried in check take a look So if you don't have this, pick some up. And I have this OCD tendency to throw reflective tape on everything. Just in case I leave it on the ice, I can always do a final shine through with my headlamp. So that's just an OCD thing that I always have, have done and uh, will continue to do. Uh, all right, sorry, enough babbling. So again, the glow cup. It connects to the Vexilar plug, and I found a plug deal. Um, carry some, uh, an extra GoPro cable off this side. I think I'm going to add one more cable back there. I added some, uh, I'm sorry, out of focus, of course. Nine out of ten times it is, right? I added some banana plugs, um, just in case I wanted to add lights from my shack, or if I wanted to power something from the Vexilar battery and I did upgrade to the lithium life po 4 lithium battery this season it's a 9 amp hour uh, 2.7 pounds over almost 6 pounds for the standard 9 amp hour lead acid battery uh, let's see moving on uh, I did a little piggyback system here so that I could add the switch to that up up light and I'll show you that in a second. And then this is the thing that I just added today. And I feel like I have this thing finally um, fully, hopefully dialed in. But let me just show you what it is. Essentially, it's just a, a plump. This, this, this cable comes with, and I plumbed it into the banana, banana plugs right here. And once you plug this sucker in, uh, all doing this one-handed so it's never easy 
Again, I zip tie everything. I don't like to make things permanent so that I can remove it and use it somewhere else if I need to. But let me just show you. Grab this extra GoPro. And what is it? Check it out. Two USB ports. As simple as that, right? Um, so plug in the USB. Right, and then plug in your unit, GoPro, and it should should give it some juice. There it is, right there in the top top left corner. So it does work. Um, something very very cool, handy, cheap. When I say cheap, it was I think 12, 13 bucks shipped from Amazon. Again, if any of you guys are curious about this stuff, I'll try to link it below if, if I can provide a link. But this little uh, adapter is called a USB tester. It measures the voltage and the amps that is being pulled through this little unit. So, how cool is this? Just take a look. You got 5.14 coming out through that um, USB port. If I had something that would pull more more data or more sorry uh, amps, it would show you. But once I plug this in, it'll kind of tell you what it's doing. Pulling in half an amp. Now it's zero. So what that means is the GoPro is full, and it's just trickle charging it whenever it needs juice. just a good little monitor to, to know exactly what you're pulling um, but yeah something that if you're ever curious about how much something is pulling pretty little cool tester that was kind of a uh, kind of deviated from my conversation um, what else I don't I think that's pretty much it from all this stuff the cool thing about also the Vexilar battery is it comes with the inline fuse. Um, I believe it's a 10 amp fuse, just in case something you know shorts. You, you at least can save your the battery and so forth. So I unplug it right here, and then I just peg it to this little cable tie. And this is as neat as I think I could get it. I'm sure I can get it more uh, tidied up, but. It's, it is what it is. It's not too big a deal for me. All I have to do is pull these two, two yellow um, connectors and I can access the battery in like a millisecond. So here is the VEX 28 inside a bucket. Um, protected. Doesn't rattle around once it's in the bucket. So again, that's why I'm going with the Pro Pack. For those of you wondering how much is setup weighs 6.98 pounds and then if we add in the GoPro this might tip it looks like it's in tip GoPro GoPro come on power cable GoPro um, all my random Forceps, toothpick, knife, nail clipper. And most importantly, my jig box. Let's see, what do we get? 8.734 pounds. So when you want to bring everything with you, um, including one possible extra rod, we're sitting at 8.7 pounds. So, pretty lightweight, I, in my opinion, because you have a lot of stuff with you, um, unit slash setup. Okay, moving along to the uh, left side of the unit. Um, this is what they call a license plate light. And I cut out a little diffuser frosted thing and I just put that over because it was pretty bright without without that piece. Um, 
and I call that the up light or the rod tip light. So it doesn't shine down directly into the ice fishing hole, but it actually shines the light up. Uh, and the theory is it's going to help prevent uh, the fish from being uh, scared away if you're fishing, let's say, 15 feet of water or less. So let me just demonstrate what that looks like. So right now, all the light is off, and the shadow below, the camera picks up more light than it really is, what it's really doing, but it's pretty dim in front of the hole. <clears throat> so let me just demonstrate what it looks like. I got the fishing pole right here, and you can see that this rod tip is pretty bright. In, in practice, it is actually pretty bright, so that's the whole theory. Um, just to help see the rod tip and you can fish almost in complete darkness. What's up guys? Uh, take two. Apparently I never hit record and I didn't notice it so I'm going to talk to the camera for the second time. Well, hope you guys enjoyed the crazy Vex FL28 video. Um, all the mods that I've done, all the ideas that's cooking in my brain, turning it into um, all these little mini projects. Uh, so, glad you guys tuned in. If you do like it, hit the thumbs up button, uh, hit subscribe, hit the bell. Every subscriber helps. I'm at like 62 or 63 subscribers. I'm trying to get to 100 so I can get a custom URL. So, if you, if you do like it, please help support me. Um, I do love everything gadgets high tech love bringing you high quality content uh, so i hope you um, follow my adventure uh, my name is andy cho again thank you for your support stay humbled be kind I'll see you on the ice <laughs>